In this video, we're gonna do some framing and we're gonna do it right now. Okay, so we have taken out this archway that was here. We fixed this floor, got it somewhat straight and supported good downstairs. Ripped out this wall that was here and transferred it over to there. Ripped out this closet and now we're gonna start framing it back in. I need to build a wall here, a wall here, and make this into two closets, one for the hallway, one for this bedroom. And I need to finish framing this bearing wall. This is the wall that is going to support the ceiling. It's directly over the beam. So I need to continue it this way. I've already got it started, but now I have to tear this apart. I'm just gonna remove this. Take the ceiling out right there, take that carpet up, do my bottom plate, do my top plate, do about five studs right here, and then I need to figure out all the closet framing. So let's start with this, tear this apart. I ended up putting this board right here in and it does not feel like it's doing anything anymore, so we can take that out. Plenty of other stuff supporting that. And in fact, I think doing all that work, I think the ceiling actually went up. Now I'm gonna try and take this little mirror shelf out without breaking anything. What do they say? Seven years, bad luck for breaking a mirror. Let's try not to. Let's get gloves. Kind of cool for what it is. I don't need it anymore. I don't like that. It's getting tight. Okay. That is why you gotta be careful. What do I do now? Maybe I'll take this screw out, see if I can relieve some of that tension. Already starting off good, huh? There's a screw here. Hopefully there's no adhesive or anything holding it there. Okay. I don't know what's holding it there. Maybe the bottom one? Great, now it's just floating. Oop. I'm gonna break something. Let's take this out. glass carefully. I'm gonna get a box. Cool. Let's see if I can tip it down towards me or like this. I hate glass. Guys, this is really cool. Behind that glass that I just took out, says right here, Paul and Rita, January 11th, maybe, 1964. The reason that's really cool is because the house was built in 1946, and as far as I knew, there was one owner, and I don't think that was their name, unless maybe that's their son and daughter, I don't know. But that is still really cool. Little piece of history of the house, so 1964, is when they did all this. Thank you for writing that, Paul and Rita. Very cool. I'm gonna get rid of the dangerous stuff here. 
and I'll move on to taking this paneling off and seeing what's in there. Maybe more surprises. Let's see if Paul and Rita left me some money behind here. This is a live outlet, so I want to be careful. Just take the faceplate off. Just make this a little easier. Favorite tool in the world. I should be able to pull the paneling down. Yes. Yes. Matt, you said you were done with demolition. We're almost there. Might as well cut this ceiling back while I'm up here. Cut this paneling back. I can see what's going on with this framing. I hate this wire. I hate having it in my house. It's very old. It's like the next step up from knob and tube. I don't like it. It's going at some point. Yeah, I might want to turn that one off. Okay, power's off to this outlet, receptacle, whatever you want to call it. That's important, and you'll see why. Yeah, that's why. So, these off. I'm gonna tighten that back up in the box. All this stuff is going to be replaced eventually. What I'm going to do is take a nail like this and just set this up temporarily like this. I know that it's out of the way of the where my studs going for this wall so I can mess with it later. Good enough for now. I'm gonna clear out a section just big enough that I can butt my wall to the other wall here. Okay, got all that out. And it looks like I can take this out without messing with the other side. And you're probably thinking, man, there's a lot of wasted space there. But that's okay. I'm gonna do some stuff on the other side to utilize that space afterwards. Right now, this is what I got. So I'll try and make that a little better in the future. Basically just trying to get everything out of the way so that it's easily taken apart from the other side. If I left this stuff here, that would be a pain to get off afterwards because I am building a wall here. So as long as I get this out, all the studs and everything can be accessed from the other side easy enough. So I'm going to take this out. Planning ahead. Trying to anyways. Be careful with Paul and Rita's drywall here. Whoops, broke into the shelf. This newer framing in here makes me wonder what used to be there. Obviously they framed it in for a reason. Hmm, interesting. Wallpaper right there. Maybe that's what was there before they put the basement stairs in. Not sure. 
But I'm gonna clean all this up and tear out that carpet so we can put our bottom plate in and our top plate. Now to figure out where my bottom plate's going, I'm gonna take a chalk line and attach it to this nail right here. And I'm gonna hold this chalk line even with the bottom plate that's already here. It's not straight for some reason. I'm gonna have to fix that. All right, so just like that. Snap a line. For some reason over here, this was not straight, so I straightened it out right here. So I'm gonna have to take those nails out and pull that back. But if this was perfectly straight, you would run your chalk line down just like that. Now I have a mark to put my bottom plate on. What also could have happened with this is if I didn't nail into, if I didn't get something solid, like I didn't get a joist, um, this board could have warped it's, it just wants to naturally curve back to being a tree. Sorry, board, you're gonna be a wall, not a tree. Well, let's try and straighten this out. See if it hits something solid. Okay, now I should be able to, oh yeah. I think that's what happened because I didn't nail it down here. So, hold it where it needs to be and nail it down. There we go. Now I can put this bottom plate in. Now to get the top plates taken care of, I'm gonna cut this first one half on that joist, and then the second one, half on that joist. I gotta cut this one back first, so I'm gonna move my temporary two by four out of the way a little bit. There is a little bit of weight on this one. I don't think I'm gonna do much by moving it. Yeah, there's not much weight on that. So I'm not sure why I nailed it right here, because that's exactly where I need to cut. <laughs> I'll just cut it back here a little bit. I just wanna be close to half on this joist right here. Not a big deal. I think I must have had a different plan in my head when I did this, because I nailed here too. So I know what happened. I just had a brain fart. I don't want this one to land half on this joist. I want this one to land half on a stud. So I should have done that back here. So now I gotta measure to where the nearest stud is gonna be. So it's gonna be here. So that's hooking on. My X is right here. So I want it half on, which is three quarters. Do it like this. Three quarters here. So whenever you have top plates like this, you want a stud to land in the middle. In this case, it's gonna be a cripple on top of the header here for the door but you want that stud to land half on if you have a split like this. Hopefully I don't have another one. Hopefully this is less than eight feet. Yep. So I'm gonna cut that right here. I'm gonna move this temporary again. Beautiful. So this one, cutting half on the joist. And I wanna do that just because it's gonna be able to catch on here when I shoot nails in here and here and here and here 
and it will be supported by this one. When you put the stud under a split, the theory is it's holding up this top plate and the other top plate if you put it right here at the split. But on the top one, since I'm doing a double, I want it to be half on the joist so I can get a nail in here, nails in here, and both of these will be sitting to hold that joist. That's my theory. Nice, 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 nice. I'm just gonna check this with the level. Make sure that this is plumb, holding this right on the bottom plate. That looks pretty good. Could stand to come out this way a little bit. Let me check it with the string line. Got my chalk line hooked up. I'm gonna check it, see how straight it is. It's pretty good. Now we go down here, gonna snap a line, try and make marks on the joist right here since the wall's sitting on the strapping. Did it work? No, but lucky for me, there's not that many joists. Mark it right here, mark it right here. I'm gonna hold this out just a little bit and nail it. And I can take a measurement for both of my top plates. 55 and 3 eighths. 55 and 3 eighths. 86. 86 and a half. And a half. Now we're gonna continue marking this off every 16 inches. I hold my tape like this. You'll notice that this piece was cut so that the stud would land on 16 inches. Now mark the rest. So what I'm gonna do is take a jack and put it in between where the studs are gonna go right there and we'll do one right here so I need to raise this up okay I have my two bottle jacks set up here with my just-in-case screws and I'm gonna try and raise this ceiling a little bit and I just want to take the weight off of this side but more than that and if you've been following along you know I want to take the weight off of this wall because this is a two by three wall with headers that are not proper where this door is. And as I lifted the floor up, you could tell some things were happening here, cracks, and this reveal got bigger. It's actually, I mean, um, got smaller. I actually locked myself in the basement for a minute. <laughs> So if that reveal moves, we know that we're taking the pressure off of this wall. And that's all I want to do. I'm not trying to level the, the ceiling or anything. I just want to take the weight off the wall here if I can. Okay, I'm just going to go a little at a time. I think there's actually a bow right there. So I might put some studs in here and then flip over here. Let's see. Okay, that's about as comfortable as I am going up with this. It dips a little in the corner here and it needs to go up right there. You can even tell there's a little dip. So I'm gonna put a stud in there, there. I'll move this over slightly so I can get my stud at the end. And then I'll take that out, put a stud there and then move that same jack over to the other side of this one. Raise that up and put a stud in there. And then I'll be all set to work on this closet.
Well, I don't think I pushed the door frame up too much, although it does look like it's a tiny bit bigger. But at least I am sharing the weight with this wall. Got it up there nice and tight, push that up a little bit. And I have a feeling over time, maybe a day or two, this will actually get everything to loosen up and the joist will sit up further. That's just my guess, because it kind of happened over here. This closet's next. So I already know that I'm gonna continue this wall going this way. Uh, we just gotta figure out where this one's gonna go. In a previous video, I mentioned that I was gonna jog this in to get my 36 inches here, but I actually talked to the building department and because of this being here and this being here, it's already gonna be under the minimum requirement for a hallway. So they are gonna allow me to go straight like this so I don't have a funky jog right here, which is great. So I'm just gonna continue this wall so it's nice and straight down this way and build a wall right here. But I gotta figure out where that one's gonna go. So let's go in the basement. So going down into the basement, what I wanna do is figure out where this framing is upstairs. So I'm gonna take this absurdly long drill bit and drill right about here and over here. And then I can draw a line and that'll tell me where this framing sits upstairs, basically. Okay, I made a line with those two holes connecting them. And remember the framing is on this side. So right here, these are the kinds of things you gotta think about is I wanna make sure the trim doesn't get cut off. So if I only had one stud here, and I put my door in, the trim would come out to about here. And then if I built my wall right here, I would end up having to cut that trim. So I don't wanna do that. So I want at least two studs like this. This is an example of the trim, how far it comes out. This is why I did a triple right here so that my trim comes to about right here. I have drywall behind here and I don't have to cut anything. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to start my wall right on the edge here. And I'm gonna do a two by four wall. So it'll be right there, three and a half inches. And I'll be overhanging about three quarters of an inch from that framing. So I'm gonna have plenty of this wall sitting on here. And it's not gonna be doing much, just holding up shelves and such in the closet. It's not a load bearing wall by any means. Um, so that'll work. And that is going to make my closet the inside dimensions about 37 inches and then drywall on each side is going to be 36 inches. That's a good size closet for something like this. To figure out where this wall is going exactly, I can already tell that the wall is a little crooked. But what we're going to do is I put a nail right here in the baseboard. Don't worry, the baseboard's coming out eventually. I put it at an angle so that when I pull on this, it will go tight. And I'm gonna bring my chalk line back here, past this mark, and I'm gonna hold it so it's even with that baseboard. And then I'm gonna snap a line. So now that's where the baseboard would be. So I need to subtract a half inch for the drywall, and then whatever the baseboard is, which is also about a half inch. So I'm gonna go an inch this way, make a mark here. I held this framing even to where it should be. So that should be about an inch, which it is. I'm gonna draw this line in pencil because this might be moving if it's crooked. So when you're working on an old house, sometimes you have to make decisions based on what you feel is right. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at this line. This says 52 and an eighth. If this wasn't here, I could measure right to the end there, but 
I'll measure off that wall. This says 52 and a quarter, a little more than a quarter. So this is already telling me what I thought was true, where this line should be pushed this way a little bit. You can also measure off the opposite, which is 36. And then this is 34 and a half. So this wall is really crooked. Uh, so I'm not gonna go off of that wall. I have to fix that wall actually. I'm just gonna make the decision to shift this right here just a little bit over and keep it even with this framing here. I'm gonna check it with a square to see how far off it is, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna go about a half inch past this mark, just kinda splitting the difference. So when I put my square up against here, you can see I am square with the framing in the basement. I don't know how that happened. And then when you go over here, and I'll just hold it back a little bit just so you can see the line. So I'm good on that line where the framing is. And then you look at my pencil mark, and that's really not bad. This, this is a little bigger over here. Uh, which, if I shift this a little bit, I think we're going to be good. So, that's what we're doing. I'm going to draw this line, because that's actually where my framing is going to sit now. Draw it over to here, connect those lines, and cut my bottom plates. So, this wall here is a 2 by 3 wall, so I'm just going to continue with 2 by 3s I'm not insulating this wall or anything. It doesn't need to be a two by four. I'm gonna run it this way, like that, where the X's are, that's where the plate sits. This one's gonna be a two by four wall. I am gonna try and get an outlet over here so we have some power in the hallway. And I took my trim, and just to show you an example, so half inch drywall right here, half inch drywall right here, We'll have about that much where we won't have to cut this. If it was the other way, where I only had one stud, I would end up having to cut this trim down. And this can be shifted because of the rough opening size. So I can play with that when I go to install it. Cool. Let's cut these bottom plates. There's no stuffs underneath here. Two by three down first, tight to this framing and even with this stud here that I held a half an inch back for drywall. I have two nails. Use them wisely. One, two. Unbuckle my um shoe. I'm not gonna nail right here because there is a doorway going here. So once I figure that out, I'll put a couple nails in but I'm gonna end up cutting this out. This one in. Nice. Nice and even and flush right here. This one, there is no door, so I can nail it right off. Now, to get these top plates in, I'm probably gonna end up ripping out, well, I am gonna end up ripping out this entire ceiling, but I don't wanna do it right now. So I'm just gonna cut pieces out of it so I can get these top plates up. I'm gonna hold a nice straight two by four right to the outside edge of my bottom plate. And then I'm gonna make a mark against here. That's gonna be where my actual top plate is going. And then that'll tell me that I'm gonna hack this out about three quarters of an inch this way just to get out of the way so I can attach my top plate up there. I'm gonna do that all around. Doesn't have to be perfect over here. So I can hack that out. It's right there. So I can hack this out.
You hear that sizzle? That's probably all my spoon. Ew. So now I can do the same trick. This wall is gonna sit on the joists right here. I'll have somewhere to nail to. And then this wall will be able to sit on the strapping. Make sure we're plumb. We're gonna see if this is the same measurement as the bottom plate. I'm gonna hold it like this. Get this plumb there. 40 and 5 eighths. Wow, same measurement as the bottom plate. That actually surprises me. If this wall was out this way, it would be longer. If it was out this way, it would be shorter. But I guess this wall is pretty plumb. And now I'm gonna do that same thing for this wall. Hold this one on my marks. Get set. Nail. There's my two by three top plate. Let's see, I made my mark right there. That's where I got my measurement. Now I'm gonna put this one in, but first, there's not enough strapping right here to nail to, um, and we're gonna need that for drywall in there, and drywall out here. So I'm gonna add a piece of strapping, but I'm gonna have to cut that old top plate out of there, even with that wall. And then I can put this piece in. You know, I was worried that this wall dropped so much that this strapping was way off. It even looked like it when I tore the closet apart. But when I put this level on here, it's actually level. So I, I thought it might get stuck right here, you know, and drop way down, but that's actually perfect. So I'm gonna reuse this strapping right here. I don't have to move it. Nice. Put this piece of strapping up here. Now I can measure for this top plate. 49 and three quarters. Pretty much the same as the bottom. I'm impressed. Put this top plate in. Nice and snug. Bottom plates in, top plates in. And before I go any further, what I'm gonna do, it's probably gonna be easier to do it now. I'm gonna add strapping right here, and then I'm gonna cut these. I'll cut that one half on, add a piece, cut this one half on here, add a piece all the way, and do the same thing here. So that I have strapping for when I hang the ceiling. Like I said, it might be easier with no walls here. And then I'll clean this up and we'll continue to frame. So let's take a look at this wall two by three wall and as you go over here you see there's a piece that's hanging out right here I want to get rid of that because I want this to be the back of the closet so I'm gonna take this piece off this three-quarter inch piece and then the only thing is is this looks like it's attached to this and this is what is holding up all these shelves and everything so I'm hoping I can take this off and then sneak a metal blade in here and cut that right down. And then I can take this out and this will still support all those shelves. See if I can pry that away a little bit. I sure can. Maybe I can just pry this away. Just gonna be careful. 
I still have a bunch of stuff in here, so. I think we're good. Cut these nails for safety's sake. Now that I got this old two by four out of here, I'm gonna put a two by three right here, even with this. It's gonna be like a continuation of this wall. Do it right here. And then I'm gonna take a two by four and go even with that. And I'll show you why I'm doing this in a little bit. And the other side is all set for now. I'm not gonna nail the bottom of this one. You'll see why. I'm just gonna get it close to where it needs to be. So this one, put it on the flat. That's what I like to say. On the bottom. Like I said, I'm not gonna nail this one yet. I'm gonna get it to where it needs to be. That looks nice. Let's just check it for fun. So there's been a lot leading up to this project and you've probably heard this rundown a bunch of times, but if you're new to the channel and you wanna see what led us here, I'll leave a link to the playlist of this whole hallway remodel, link in the description. But here is the deal. When you come down the stairs, this head height is just not gonna work. It's you have to duck every single time you come down. And this narrows right here, so that gets in the way, that's annoying. So my whole plan here is to make this better while I'm doing that. And what I am gonna do is I'm gonna bring my head height up, I think about six inches here. And this might be controversial. Let me know what you think. I'm gonna do it anyways, but so the new head height is gonna be about right here. And instead of doing this, which I would have to do, and go like this all the way down here, I am actually gonna come out straight, just like this. So that'll be like my first shelf for each closet. Now, the reason I'm gonna do that is because this going all the way here at an angle is in my opinion, kind of useless. At least it'll be flat, you can store stuff on it. And downstairs to utilize that space, right in this area right here in the basement, I can put a shelf and store stuff on the stairs. That's my thought. So before I do any of that, I gotta do something very important. I gotta take care of my sticker wall. I don't wanna lose it or ruin it. So I'm gonna tear this paneling off so I can save it. Sticker wall is safe and sound. This is interesting. That had to be the old opening for the stairs. It was further this way. Well, is it even with that? I wonder if this was further over. I don't know. Well, my head height isn't going to be up that high, but I'm going to do 80 inches off of here and take my extremely long drill bit and do some pilot holes. So this is my hole. I transferred it here and level the line across. That's going to be the bottom of, I'm going to do like a two by four ledger all the way here. And that is pretty high, but nothing I can do. Can't move the stairs. So I'll put that ledger in and we'll go from there. So I got my line here. I'm gonna do a two by three right here. This is gonna act as not only a support for this wall, because I'm gonna cut this right here, but it will also be a nailer for the basement when I go to do my plywood sheet right here. So nail this in. Thing on this side. 
Uh, I got my two by four ledger, as I'm gonna call it. Just check it for level, see how I did. Pretty good. Yeah, this side. And this is why I didn't nail the bottom of this one because I'm gonna end up cutting it right here. And then I'm gonna nail into each of these. Add a piece on top of that. Then I need a nailer for the inside of the closet. So that one's gonna go right here. Attach my drywall to. Let's mark out the easy wall first. Not that any of it's hard, but this one you don't have to think a lot. A stud right here as a nailer on the inside. When I say nailer, I mean something to attach drywall or plywood or whatever you're gonna use. And we know there's gonna be a stud right here on the inside. And there needs to be a two by three stud right here. And we know that we need a two by three stud right here as a nailer. Same with over here. There's gonna be a stud right there. Uh, I'm going to mark these out so every 16 inches we have a stud, 16. If this was a different situation, I might do 15 and a quarter and 31 and a quarter, basically subtracting three quarters so you could take eight foot stock and have it line up on the center of a stud. But this is a short span, I'm not worried about that. So I'm just going to mark the bottom plate and I'll put my studs in, plumb them up, and attach them to the top. I don't need to mark the top as well. Just the bottom. That stud right there. I got my nailer here. Nailer on that side. And here, and here. Stud, stud. Nailer, and I did myself a favor and attached this so it wouldn't be a nightmare afterwards. And then I put this nailer in. Got a little update for you. This, I think I may have changed my mind, or my wife has changed my mind. She brought up some good points though, and I thought about it a lot. So if I make it square, 34 inches. But having it at an angle, you put stuff on it and it just falls. Well, I could put some cleats on it. That'd be easy enough. I could do shelves on an angle. I really want that head clamp. Maybe I can have some floor space in the front. Kind of like it is now. Happy wife, happy life, right? So I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try and get the most space I can in these closets while still getting a nice head clearance in the basement. I'm gonna do the best I can. So if I was to do this square, it would go from here to this line right here, just like that. So as soon as you open that closet, it would be plywood right here and a plywood top on each side. If I did it just at an angle and did the entire thing like this right down to here, then you would have a similar situation. This would be plywood at an angle, but I need that head clearance. So. I'm gonna try and kind of split the difference here. So what they did here, I didn't realize there's so much room back here. This goes to like back here. And I think I just have to tear this apart and do some framing in the basement and try and get this to have at least, if I can have some floor space here, I could store bigger things in the front, like a suitcase or something right here. And then on this side, if you were to hang dresses or long clothes, pants, whatever, you could at least have it right here. I can do a flat shelf right about here to make it more useful. And if I had to, like they did, I can do cleats if I want to store shoes or something. I think I can make it work. So I'm changing my plan. I'm going to do this at an angle. I'm going to end up changing this a little bit. I might just take this off and start from scratch. You know what? That's what I'm going to do. Take this off, take these off, 
these things happen, things change. I'd rather take care of it now and uh, do it the way I actually wanna do it. So I got these nailers out of here, top and bottom. I just wanna run uh, one all the way up and not have, of course I could have cut it, but I want it to look nicer than that and be more solid. I can reuse this and just cut it wherever I do my framing here. I actually attached this nailer right here, so that'll be for the inside of the closet. And then over here, I just took this one out because I'm gonna run a full one down here for the nailer for that side. So now, let's just start tearing into this and figure out what we gotta do to frame this in. I've actually been itching to get rid of this thing. I just didn't want to tear it apart with a kid running around, but now I have some plywood pieces to go around this to block it off afterwards, in case I don't finish today. This is classic use whatever I got kind of framing, which I can't blame them. I mean, it lasted 40 years, 60 years, whatever. We got a couple pieces of three quarter, we got a leftover two by three that was obviously used somewhere else. And you got a piece of a door frame. There's a door hinge right there. Yeah, it worked. All right, let's rip it up. Where's the gold bullion at? Is it under here? Nope, but there's the basement. see this is me standing up straight on the stair and you can see where my head is that needed to change and I think this is good so right on this side the closet or what's gonna be the closet for the bedroom I can frame this kind of like this is I'll go straight down from here and frame it like this so that the opening stays even with that two by eight going across here and I'll go all the way to here. And then on the other side right here, I'll take that small lip that's hanging over that two by eight and I'll match it down here. So it'll go probably about here, all the way to here. So right here, I'm only gonna have a couple inches to the floor. I can run my flooring in to the closet. But on this side, I'll have about 10 inches here or so, give or take, all the way to the floor. So that won't be as bad. And then I'll have my, my angle come down here. I'm happy with that. Now I gotta do some framing in the basement. So let's start by continuing this framing all the way right now. This is where it's hacked up right here. So I'm just gonna cut this an inch and a half back actually take that piece out and I'll just put a piece from there to here. Obviously take this wire down and that will be good enough for that. I may end up scabbing pieces in here to straighten all this out in the future, but right now that's gonna be good. That'll hold up what I need to hold up in the closet. Take out my just in case board. Girl Scout membership card from 1969. Well, that's cool. This is my piece, my new piece, old piece. This will be good until I figure out exactly what I want to do. May have, end up reframing this entire thing later on, depending on the situation. Joist hanger here, just like I did on the other side. So 
So that piece is in there. And what I want to do here is take a two by 10 and cut angles, rip it down with this angle on it like this. So I can kick this out, kick the framing out. So I can have my framing sit here instead of having it sit on this. Okay, so I ripped this down. I ended up ripping it down with a circular saw because I hate using a table saw by myself making cuts like this. So I ripped it down with a circular saw. I notched out the edges here for the bottom for the joist hangers. We'll see how I did. Okay, got that piece in. Now, let's see if we can take care of this framing. Now, since I thought I was going straight across, I put the bottom of this with where that hole is that I drilled through. But in reality, <clears throat> I want that to be the height for in here. And if I'm coming down at an angle, I don't need this to be up that high. It could actually be lower. So I think I'm going to frame this differently. So I actually am going to pull that piece right off. So this is what I'm thinking of doing. I got a uh, bottom plate here. It's not nailed in. Just want to show you. Uh, leave it long, frame this in, and then cut them. And I'm thinking of downsizing to two by threes and doing something like this. I'll attach it here, attach it here, and then I'll add a piece here, add another one. I'll make sure I have enough of these to support everything, but this isn't really structural, structural. It's not really gonna hold anything up besides when I put a little shelf right here. Um, and really, I'm gonna gain a lot of headroom here. Um, I'm not taking up that much more space doing it this way. So I'm happy about that. And the wife will be happy about that. So let's get this thing attached. I'm gonna reuse this. This was this piece right here. So I'm gonna attach that right about there. So what I'm gonna do is measure right here to my piece of framing in the basement and just make sure that this is on the edge of it. What's gonna happen is I'm gonna put this here like this and then this will be at an angle and the plywood's just gonna go all the way. There's no sense in trying to fill that floor in back there. We wouldn't gain anything from that. Measure this one, this side, 13. And measure this again, 12 and a half. Right there, now I wanna make sure that it's even against the wall I built here. At least close. I think that's good. It's about a quarter inch off side to side, which is fine because like I said, the plywood's going straight to this wall. So I'm gonna put a couple nails in that. I'm not gonna go crazy right now. Try and get into that. Now I can get these pieces out of the way. a bottom plate under here. And that is going to be the edge of my framing. I'm going to screw this one in. Okay, and this is going to go here. And there's like a hundred different ways to do something like this. Maybe not a hundred, but um, don't take this as this is the only way to do this. This is just how I'm gonna do it. Now let's check this for square. I wanna make sure it's square and even as much as possible anyways. I'm gonna check off of that wall. 37 and a half, 37 and three quarters. 
So if I put this at 37 and a half, I know that I'm even here. What about here? 10 and 7 eighths. 10 and 7 eighths. So now, measure off of this beam under here, or this 2 by 8. 33 and 7 eighths. And over here, 33 and a half. So that's going to be a little wonky, but that's OK. It really matters in this closet here. So I'm going to make it even there. And then whatever happens in the basement happens. Just don't want to make a lot of dust. That's why I'm screwing this, because it's right here in my face. this piece right here. By the way, I ripped these at an inch and a half and I'm putting these in so I can tell where my nailers are going. And this is going to be the nailer for the inside of the stairs and for the outside. I'm going to attach my uh, plywood right to this and then whatever I do, drywall or whatever, can attach right here. So this piece I pretty much have even on top of that 2 by 8 and I'm even here against this doorway, this wall, attach that right here. So now I can cut this two by four out right here and right here. Boink. I can put a couple more nails in that. So there's a lot of stuff that I'm going to do to this wall for framing. Essentially, I'm going to take these pieces, which this is just about a 45 degree angle. Um, but I'm going to get I'm basically going to make a header right here so it'll go straight across. But I'm going to cut this up three inches and then put a couple pieces this way, make sure that's supported up this way and down this way. And then I can put my pieces up here, frame this all in, and I should be good to go. Once I get this wall all taken care of, I will cut this before I actually put these pieces in. we go. I got this in here, which is essentially a header. Um, got some jacks underneath it, and that is going to support this. So the moment we've all been waiting for before I frame this, I'm going to cut all this drywall out of here and then cut this floor. Let's do it. Nice. Down here. Oh, beautiful. I can just wave my arms. Look at that, an even stairwell. We don't have this jet out anymore. I got plenty of head height. This is great. Not the best cut I ever made, but 
Also not the worst. I'm happy. So I've already cut these. I'm gonna use two by fours on the sides because I can. Just took a little guesstimation when this wasn't here and this wasn't here. I kind of held it up like this and made a mark and then ended up with about just over 45 degrees for this. Let's frame it in. Two by four on the other side. Now for these nailers, call everything nailers, even though you screw stuff, but just want to make sure drywall and whatever material you're going to use, like plywood, is going to have something to screw or nail to. Cut those. Nail right here. Okay. Now we can do two by threes, fill in the middle. I'm going to do 12 inch on center. This is about three feet. So I'm gonna do one here and one here. Hold my tape down here on 12 and then on 24. So now we can ply with this. So this is how I like to cut a piece like this, a triangle. Take a piece of whatever, drywall, and draw out what I need. So it's gonna be like that, not to scale. And then I'm gonna measure up here, 33 and a quarter. Give myself some wiggle room. So 33 and a quarter here to here, and then down here, 36. So 36 on the bottom. As long as this is square, which I know it is, I can use the square end, whatever the factory end is, and hold it like this. This would be the square end. Measure here, measure here, and then connect those two points. Very easy and do the same thing on the other side. 33 and a quarter, over this way, 36, make a line, and cut it. Now you have a beautiful piece of plywood that fits right in. So before I attach this, I want to make sure it works on the other side too. Looking good. I'll go mark it, cut it, and then attach these. I'm going to use inch and a quarter screws on the sides so I don't go through the uh, two by four. I'm not going to glue this. I'm just going to screw it into place. This is half inch plywood, by the way, sanded really nice plywood uh, and it happened to be the cheapest plywood that they had at the store so it's interesting used to be the most expensive <laughs> screw it in there with construction screws I think I need to change the blade on my saw this is a terrible cut that's okay I'm gonna do some kind of edging here when it's all done I wanted to do plywood here just to make everything more sturdy instead of drywall because you could probably kick through drywall right here. But half inch plywood, I don't think so. Depends on how mad you are. And now the top is just gonna be a square cut. It's gonna go right to this wall, 49 and a half, 37 and an eighth. I'm gonna mark center of these inside uh, rafters 
joists, studs, I don't know what you want to call them. Now I can use two inch on the top. Not as bad as I thought. Not as big, you know? I think the square might have been a little too much if I did that. Okay, thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comments. Too big? I mean, <laughs> this is the smallest I could possibly go with still getting the head height down here, but right here, there'll be a door, so this will be cut. I have no idea how I'm gonna attach the drywall here, but you'll have like a little, like the flooring from here will go and butt to here. It's even, it's way better on the other side. I have about 10 inches here that you could store things uh, in flat on the floor. And like I said, I'll probably do a shelf about here. And then the rest of it will be for hangers. Over here, I'll probably do more than one shelf because remember, I'm putting a wall in the middle here. This is gonna be a linen closet, so I'll probably do a shelf here, here. This is probably all gonna be shelves. Yeah, I'm pumped about the head height though. Way better, way better than before. Jet out's gone. I can actually walk down here without hitting my head. I love it. I don't know about you, but I am exhausted. So let's wrap this video up. Let me know in the comments what you think. If this is your first time here and you haven't subscribed, definitely consider it. If you wanna see more content like this, you can click here-ish and here-ish and check those videos out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Hey guys, you wanna eat this huge uh, party pizza in the basement? Oh no, we can fit now. I remember I cut the floor open. Pretty cool, huh? I know, it's amazing, yeah.